Hello, and we're live. I'm Francis McCaffrey, and I'm a fifth generation Black Torn Shillelagh stick maker. I'm based here in Kilorglan, County Kerry, in the southwest of Ireland. And uh, every Friday for one hour, um, I make myself available for you guys in the community. And I do a live stream here on uh, YouTube as well as on Facebook uh, simultaneously. So if you're around, um, if you're watching this retrospectively, it's it's fine too. Um, I usually leave these uh, live streams up for uh, for as long as possible. So if you do miss me live, you can always uh, just watch it and, uh, and and catch up retrospectively as well. And uh, during these live streams, um, I usually uh, tell people, you know, what I'm working on, um, show them some sticks as well. Um, talk about Irish culture and uh, usually talk about about anything that uh, that you guys decide. And as always, you guys um, decide and which way the conversation goes as well. Liesl, how are things? Hope everything is uh, is is okay there in the UK. And uh, another halfway through another summer doesn't feel like it, does it? It's been cloudy in Ireland for the uh, the, the past few weeks, so uh, not really too much going on in Ireland. Uh, I just had some American tourists came in from from Colorado, and uh, I told him I was doing a live stream at six. Let's see if he actually actually watches it. You know, they always say they're going to watch it as well. There's my good old dad, old man McCaffrey, joining the live stream as well, sitting in his his throne in the sitting room, as well, having your cup of tea, are you? Or I actually probably aren't having a cup of tea because mom's watching watching Aaron. John, hi Francis. Uh, what about the comment uh, about a whole stick maker? Um, you must kind of elaborate. I don't really understand that. Let's see. Um, boo, 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 boo. John Elliott, our things to uh, my favorite unionist of the community. Uh, good day, uh, Francis. Uh, Paul uh, Carter as well. Thanks for, for joining the McCaffrey Crafts live stream. It's half in unit, uh, thunderstorms in central uh pennsylvania all right all right james man you got you guys start saying some positive things every week you join the live stream and you're always always there's always something there that's bothered you each week so i'm uh, i'm putting a challenge to you as well to uh to to, to say, tell me something positive that happened this week to you uh, hi frank's greetings saying hello to my dad steve kelly he's uh he's always uh around and here as well good supporter of mccaffrey crafts appreciate that uh let's see now liesel saying good thanks uh, we have torrential rain here today, <laughs> biblical rain. Yeah, like it, it can it can happen as well. And uh, yeah, but it's interesting. Like the thing is, when you're not used to it, and it happens rarely as well, it's relaxing. Like you know, it's just an ASMR. It's just hitting against the window, and you're inside, and you know, just having a cup of tea and looking out as well. Sometimes it's it's kind of therapeutic as well. Just uh, you know, when when the rain is is heavy as well. Like I don't mind torrential downpours and rains and stuff. Uh, hello to Francis, Frank, and to Liesl as well. Hello, and uh, how are you as well? Oh, people looking in the window here. I forgot to move the partition I have. They can wait anyway. Uh, hi, Frank, and hello, everyone. Everyone send hello to, to my dad. Uh, okay, we have Joe Douglas as well. Hello to you, Joe, in Germany. Very good to see you as well. Uh, let's see. Um, I thought someone was being rude, so I caught it on your screen as well. Uh, one second, there's some guy knocking away in the door. I think he'll go away now in a second. Hi, Mary. Uh, Liesl saying as well. And uh, hi, uh, everything to, uh, to to you as well. One second, there's some guy trying to come in. I think he's gone. Yeah, sometimes there's like people knocking on the door and, and different things as well. But, uh, you know, I give you guys my attention as well. So it's all uh, all well well and good. And uh, look, so I've been working on a load of different things this week. So, like, the main thing I've kind of been working on this week is uh, hazel. And, uh, you know, I want to, uh, to to show you guys, like, what actually hazel looks like. Because I saw uh, online during the week there were some kind of uh, amateur stick makers and, and uh, you know, the, these part-time guys as well. And uh, they they were they think that uh, black torn and hazel are the mm -hmm. same. <laughs> so like it's it's uh it's quite funny. So I thought I'd I'd um I'd show and give you guys a little display. So I've made quite a lot of these hazel sticks. Um, hazel is a fantastic stick, and it comes in two colors. So here's kind of where the confusion comes to these amateur guys who haven't got a clue what they're talking about. And like no matter how much I tell them I'm an expert, I've been doing this for since 2006. I've been doing it for a long time, 16 whatever, 17 years as well. And uh, let's see now. 
so here we go and uh i'm just showing you so this is a hazel uh walking uh stick as well and uh you can see what it what it looks like so this is hazel so a lot of people there's two colors like in hazel so you can kind of see if the darker color and then this kind of like silver kind of color looks kind of a little bit like the rowan tree color and you have these two colors as well but you know this is this is clearly hazel stick as well and uh, a lot of people confuse this when they see this online some guy will say look at my stick you know that is not blackthorn as well look at the hazel like you know blackthorn doesn't look like this at the top as well so again, this is this is just um, to to educate those uh, numbskulls um, who were were giving giving a you know a friend of mine a hard time during the week. And it's so funny because this friend of mine he didn't buy a stick from me. His mom bought this stick from a company in the UK that sells blackthorn sticks. And uh, it was just my usual my usual uh, haters. They thought it was my stick, and they thought they would jump in because they as, as a moment of weakness. But you must be pretty early in the morning to uh, to to out outshine McCaffrey, McCaffrey Crafts as well. So, and my friend of mine, um, he posted a stick, and everyone was saying that uh, it wasn't Blackthorn, and he asked me to have a look at it. And I know the manufacturer, uh, I know where it was made, I know the people who actually make that stick and the company involved. And uh, it was uh, made in the, uh, the UK, and uh, I know it pretty well. And uh, it wasn't one of my sticks, and it was so funny because all the guys um who are my usual haters they they usually think it's one of my sticks so like uh you know it's it's, it's usually just led by by this kind of raw competitor guy but um i just want to kind of explain so hazel is uh, is a very nice wood it's very light um the hazel wood grain and handle are very different from the black thorn. like you'd really have to be a numbskull to kind of confuse hazel and uh, and black thorn as well like they're really different woods as well it's like you know comparing me to brad pitt or something like that it's like you know i'm i'm no brad pitt myself man uh let's see francis I, i'm curious uh, can i make a, a shillelagh from uh, a hawthorn wood um you it wasn't really the main wood that was used like mainly it was black thorn uh, oak uh, holly ash to a lesser extent i'm sure people use uh, hawthorn as well uh, to make it um like it's all right like it's i don't try to use it too much it's so common everywhere like if i ever got into the hawthorn business i would never have never run out of supply you know there's so much everywhere it's it's like you know i have no problem finding hawthorn it's like the easiest wood for me probably to find uh you loved my walkabout video this week very good I should do more of them, but like uh, the weather has been crap here in Ireland. Like it's been raining every day. The clouds are there and it kind of rains. It stops. It was raining just, just a moment ago as well. Uh, and let's see. Uh, let's see. 206 FA. Hello. Uh, I'm the man uh, who live in Korea. You remember. Uh, sorry for late. I had military training. I'm planning to buy the 19 and a half one. Very good. I do indeed. Uh, I think I remember speaking to you and telling you that I lived in Korea. Um, I lived in uh, Seoul. I started in, uh, what was it called? Uh, I was in um, Wanju as well. You know, the, the Yansai University. I, I worked um, with the uh, the Yansai University. It's a very famous university in Seoul and in there as well. And I did some work for them. Uh, so, like, yeah, I, I, spent, uh, I spent a few years living in Korea. I know all the Korean customs, especially the drinking, the Korean drinking customs sort of it. Do you, do you think Irish people drink more? You're wrong. Korean people of all the nationalities around the world, of all the places I've been, no one can drink as much as, as Korean men. Um, like I've gone out drinking with them and even guys that are very strong drinkers. Korean uh, has a very, very strong drinking culture. Uh, it looks beautiful, the 181. Yes, you're interested in, in a unique piece as well. Yeah, I shipped to, to Korea, DHL or UPS. I've sent a few uh, as well. And uh, let's see now go on to uh, a few a few more comments as well let's have a look now we have james uh, hazel sticks only grow in uh, southwestern uh, pennsylvania very good let's see and uh, jump for i prefer a dark uh, chestnut hazel but the mottled hazel but a good wood and um, for for beginners to start with yeah like i usually just keep it simple and say like you know there's just like two two kind of main colors as well like you know there's a few different darker ones there's a few different lighter ones and different things as well but it's kind of easier just to kind of dumb it down to the uh the numbskulls that are out there as well uh let's see now i saw a hazel tree in um, a campground and uh, i could not cut it down yeah sometimes uh you know you, you have to be careful of where you cut it as well uh so you know just uh, just to, to to be careful um of that as well you know uh 
let's see now. Uh, it's just jumped again here. So sometimes when you're reading through the live comments, uh, one second now, where was I again? Oh, here we go. Beautiful stick. Uh, let's see, John says, um, I never buy um, stick unless it's yours. I'd rather um, do uh, with you. It's important to support Irish crafts and uh, may not know uh, how to, to make shillelaghs as well. So thank you, John. It's very important, of course, to support uh, Irish businesses, Irish crafts. Um, the Irish Blackthorn walking stick is a heritage pro uh, product of Ireland. It's a symbol of Ireland. It was given to foreign dignitaries as well. Um, and I am a big advocate for protecting, of course, um, Irish heritage products. Um, I don't like... You know, when Irish heritage products are, are copied and uh, made abroad and uh, people are trying to cash in on Irish culture as well. Um, I feel that is not the uh, the, the right way to, uh, to to do it as well. But weight matters uh, uh, on a blunt weapon, isn't it as well? Um, it depends. Like, you know, sometimes you if it's too heavy, it's slow for striking. So you 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 know if if you want something very heavy you're going to strike slowly sometimes it's good to have something a little bit lighter because you can strike faster as well and uh, francis you're better looking than than brad pitt dude yes i am thank you liesel as well well you know sooner or later he'll get older and older and older uh and you're right as well yep um i'm playing a drinking game today every time you say as well i take a drink as well <laughs> that's good indeed uh, let's see now. Um, I thought uh, it was an idea as I find a hot. Let's see. I thought it an idea as I find Hawthorn and Blackthorn grow together. Um, is damn. So I, I thought it, it's an idea as I find Hawthorn and Blackthorn grow together. It's damn hard wood too. And work. yes, all right. The thorns are, are kind of annoying as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, John Elliott, get ready for Man United to have a, a, a great season as well. And. Uh, I don't really have time for for watching uh, the soccer or football or anything like that. I know my dad does the uh, the fantasy, um, the fantasy league where you pick your team each year and and uh, and different things like that as well. And uh, you know, it's um, it, it, it's it's something that some guys kind of get into. But like uh, my life is 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 quite busy. Like I don't really have time to watch things. Like maybe on a Friday night I might watch something. Um, I spend most of my time like online uh, answering questions and, and getting back to people as well and um, do a lot of calls with people during the week and like from around, um, you know, 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m. I get so many messages as well. Uh, yes, Frank, I uh, hope you are keeping well as well. Yep, my dad's in great form. My dad's in his 70s, you know, actually his birthday is coming up in September, was he? He's born 49. So are we 2003 now? So he'd be, uh, what's that, 70? He'll be 74. So my dad will be 74. And uh, he's doing it right in the 70s. You know, he's staying active. He's keeping busy. He's learning new things. He's online. You know, he's interacting with people. And he's doing social. And, uh, you know, he's he's still active and still has it. And uh, I think that's very important as well. Like, you know, most people write off men way too early in life. You know, ah, oh, you're 50. You can't work anymore. Ah, oh, you're 60. You can't work anymore. Ah, oh, you should be retired and stuff. You know, but but men like working. They they like being useful. They they like doing things. And you know, my my dad, you know, he stayed he stayed active as well. Like, uh, you know, he's he's a great guy for for volunteering here in the shop, which is uh, which is quite good. <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm of course I'm not going to uh, to, to penalize him. He, he wants to volunteer and help me to straighten sticks and different things as well. But uh, yeah, my dad is um, he has a nice routine now. He calls down to the shop. And most days and most mornings and uh you know we're we're always thinking of things to uh to, to improve as well and uh my dad's always uh always good as well for uh for for coming up for for different ideas but i do prefer my handles over his handles we always disagree on 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 the handles uh let's see um you got me into shillelagh carving very good i wanted the challenge to see why uh why cost is up and i enjoy uh, journey carving shillelagh still Thanks, uh, Francis, for inspiration. Thanks, John. Yeah, go for the Horton. But, like, just remember, it's um, the, the torn, thorns of the Horton are pretty bad as well. Like, if you get, you know, you have to be very careful. Um, and, again, like, usually you kind of, it's better to leave it in wintertime um, because then when you're seasoning it, it's less prone to uh, to, to cracking as well. Uh, way to go, Frank. Uh, no good being a pouch potato. No, no, he, he's, he's, a, he's pretty active as well. Uh, let's see. Do you use Wimney and Chimney to make a shillelagh? No, I don't. No. Um, that was reported, and like you know, it, it, a lot of people always go back to to that comment about the uh, the the chimney and the shillelagh. It was like reported in in John Hurley's book based on some interviews that people did. But if you remember, like the old Irish cottages 
will have a very la uh, large uh, fireplace. I've seen them as well. Um, and uh, in the fireplace, they would have like a cauldron and they would have like a, a metal thing and they would have the cauldron kind of uh, down for, for cooking various stews and, and for different things as well. And, uh, you know, so um, uh, again, like, Many people, you know, some people would like say that uh, it was put up there for blackening and it was put up there for seasoning and for, and for different things. But like the heat of the fire, it would have to be really, really way up near the top um, for, for it because like, you know, if he, you can't speed up the heat, uh, heating process as well. But like, you know, maybe if you wanted to kind of like blacken it or something with a bit of soot and maybe if it was nearly seasoned and you just want to kind of put it up there for a day or two or like maybe if you would put some finish on it at the time. And um, I guess some of the uh, the paint finishes wouldn't be the same as they are now in modern days and um, they probably would take quite a long time to to dry. So maybe they put on some finishes and then just put it up there to uh, to do it as well. But, you know, now, you know, with, with experience as well, it's probably not the best thing to do. Like, again, it, it might have been an amateur stick maker guy who, who just threw them up there and it might have like, you know, destroyed them as well. And um, we must keep the brain active as well. That's good. It is. It is good indeed. Uh, Paul Carter says hi, Mary, as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mux heaps was used. Uh, wrap stick in greasy paper heap from rotten dung. Uh, yeah, like there's loads of these little kind of reports of, of what was really done. Like some people would throw it in dung heaps and uh, things would, would do it like that as well. Uh, hi, Paul. Yeah, in the modern style as well. Well, like, you know, in, in Ireland, there's there's no there's no technique other than patience and waiting so like you know the there is no like modern style it still is the old way but the best thing to do with black thorn is patience like you have to wait like if you're trying to push it up in the chimney you're trying to like speed up the process it's going to crack it's going to break and um, the best thing that i always say and i always recommend is you need two, uh, two three years maybe four years sometimes and if you have patience and you season your stick well you put it in a room that has a lot of air moving as well. That's the better. Like your your stick would season better outside in the wind than it would up a chimney. Like if you put your piece of blackthorn wood up the chimney, um, it's it's not going to do as good as a piece of wood that was out in the wind, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, let's see. John says, uh, so right. Uh, John says, I think holly is the most underrated wood. I like it and use it a lot as well. Um, well, yeah, you, you probably heard that from me, John, as well on this channel. I've, I've said that. Um, earlier um, as well about how I do uh, like holly and uh, you know that's why I'm probably going to be doing a lot more holly as well over the next next few years um, it's a nice wood and uh, it just takes a bit longer to season that's the thing like I have I have holly but it's like it's not ready yet it takes um, it takes a good bit as well to, to season the wood uh, good evening zero fox how are things with you and I uh, hope you're well I have a lot of a lot of hazel a lot of hazel sticks done as well I'll give you a little hazel test there's a nice Hazel stick. There's one, two, three. More hazel as well. Have this one finished as well. I have an awful lot, awful lot of hazel done as well today. Let's see. I have a few more hazel sticks here as well. Because I was making a few YouTube videos and shorts as well. So many, so many different like varieties of, of hazel as well. And I just separate them just into two categories, like the light and dark. Like, you know, you have kind of the, the, these are the main two that kind of grow around near me. You have like one that's like a bit dark and you have ones lighter. Like, you know, here's the kind of like lighter ones. And, you know, here is kind of like the darker one, you know. Uh, but again, look, you can see like the uh, the wood is, is quite similar um, on that as well. So I can show you like quite, quite a lot of hazel sticks here as well. And um, so you can kind of see it as well. Um... So there you have it as well. It's like a really kind of nice, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of hazel there. Wait, let's be careful. Uh, let's see now. We have a few more. Uh, let's see. John says, uh, I made a great cudgel from Hawthorne. Only mention I found is a Shillelagh movie is Gangs of New York. Nanny McPhee movie. Yeah, the, the twisty stick. And she walks with a Shillelagh and bangs it on the floor. Yeah, I've been asked several, several times to make the Nanny McPhee stick. Uh, I prefer holly stripped right back um, to the bare wood as well. It just—it's like everything, John. It just depends on the wood. Um, sometimes it might look good like that. Sometimes, if there's something interesting feature you want to highlight as well, um, you know. But it's, it holly is a very pale wood as well. So sometimes you have to kind of like think about that because if it's very pale, sometimes it's hard to take pictures as well for for like you know giving to, to selling it online and stuff. Uh, evening as well, a uh, fellow foxy as well. Let's see, uh, two or six FA. How would you think about ebony woods to uh, to make uh, shillelagh? Um, 
I think it's pretty hard. I have some ebony wood here. Um, wait, wait, let me, I have ebony wood. Here's a block of ebony wood. It was given to me as well. Um, this guy uh, wanted me to attach this to, uh, to, to handles as well. Um, I find it too hard to work with. Um, it's just like really, really hard even to cut through and uh, even to shape and stuff as well. It's like very, very hard. Like it could be done, but it's like, it's a lot of, like I use hand tools and rasps and Shinto rasps and different things like that as well. Um, so like, you know, the ebony woods is more the knob carries, the African type of woods. And uh, like that piece came from Ghana, it was sent to me. And uh, so yeah, like ebony woods are hot uh, are, are hard and they're they're used for, um, you know, for for knob uh, knob carries, which is the African style of of knob stick as well. So in Africa, they do have their own kind of type of stick, which is pretty cool as well. Uh, the heads of them hazels are, are are first class as well. Yeah, I can show you a few more ones. Like um, I find hazel um is a bit easier to carve, you know. So you can get these knob sticks a bit more, and like um you can get them like straighter, and you come with it. They come with a block. So like um you know when when you're working on hazel, it's like um the wood is a bit softer to go through. <laughs> <clears throat> so I find it kind of easier. Like the thing is, um, you're only as good as the wood that you find. So if you find like a piece of hazel like this and it's got a little block at the top of it, it just makes this, you know, a bit, bit easier as well. Like, um, you know, it's very hard to find black thorn in quantity like that as well. So like, you know, if you see a guy selling black thorn and he's got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these, you know, they're usually two piece or you ask questions about it, you're, you know that already. Um, but yeah, like um, these, uh, these hazel ones, like, uh, you know, it's, they're not bad. Like they're just like you just you just kind of shape them out like with a handsaw. Like I don't you can use bandsaws and different things as well. But, you know, I like my fingers too much to uh, to, to really. And you don't need to like I'd be quick as doing it with a little handsaw. <laughs> and it's like easier to kind of cut through. You just kind of make all the little cuts. So I usually just do the cuts. Then I get the Shinto rasp as well. You can see a few of the little rasp marks where there's still a few of the little rasp marks in it as well. So one of the kind of one of the, the signature things of my products is that sometimes I leave little handmade signs in it as well. Like, you know, you want you want always to have a stick that, that's handmade. And like if something's handmade, it's going to have little rasp marks, little kind of things and little features on it as well. That kind of gives it the unique charm, especially like when it's coming from from uh, from from, uh, you know, from a stick maker. You want you want that thing as well. You don't want to like too heavily over wood turned handles and stuff as well. Uh, let's see. Any hard and heavy wood is great for for shillelaghs as well. Very good. Um, every day uh, on my morning walk, I take along my favorite of four McCaffrey uh, crafts, uh, black thorn sticks as well. Yeah, it's good to go and walk. I love going on walks. I, I, I should make more videos when uh, when I go on walks. Um, I've looked, I pretty much scouted all the places that I'm going to cut black thorn next year. Um, and I think from counting, I've counted about 1500 kind of sticks. But um, yeah, like, as I said, I can only really physically cut around like 800 each year. And then like, you know, I have uh, I have a few guys, you know, because I'm such such a big, big name now in Blackthorn. And, you know, like I, I'm the biggest company in Ireland, hands down, both on, on revenue by far. Um, I may I sell the, the most sticks as well, the most quantity. Um, I'd be the, the biggest company in Ireland at the moment um, based on, on revenue. Um, so like, uh, yeah, so like, uh, you know, to, to maintain you know the the best as well like you know as as part of any journey of a business you have to expand so like you know i can cut about about 500 um or sorry about six to eight hundred per year on average like you know i'd love to be able to get like a thousand but you see like all the places that i get the black turn from they're a bit hard to get into and get out of i'd love to find i know the the right type of hedge if i see it where i can go in clean it out and get get hundreds out of but you know it's rare enough to, to find something like that good that you have access to as well um, so yeah, so I'm always looking to recruit people who can cut black thorn for me as well. Um, I have three, like I have three guys in addition to myself, which uh, I do uh, employ uh, during the uh, during the, uh, the the winter season as well. And uh, I could probably use another five guys cutting for me um, easily with the uh, with the, the demand that that uh, that I have. Like uh, in recent years, the McCaffrey Crafts brand has got very strong. Uh, my name is is very good as well. Like uh, a lot of the sticks that that uh, that I've sent around the world um, is been spread through word of mouth. Like Tim, you have one of my sticks. You probably tell people who tell people who tell people. And like you know, I get a lot of uh, a lot of business from Colorado when sticks go there. I get a lot of business from different places. And uh, you know, every year you know it's it seems to be going uh, very um, very well. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, hello, Frank, as well. So everyone's saying the as well now. I never realized I said as well so much. I see some t-shirts, man, that says as well. Uh, let's see. Um, you need um, a Fordham and uh, an angle grinder. Um, yeah, I know, like, some people use the angle grinder to, like, you know, carve and stuff like that. But, like, you don't need that with hazel. Like, maybe, like, in the black thorn sometimes. But, like, uh, I don't know. I just don't like using. I did that before. I did it for ages. Um, I find just once you do the cut right, you just need to cut it in the right shape. And once you get the cut right, Shinto rasp does it. Like, it's, you know, to be honest, I, I'm faster with a Shinto rasp than I am with an angle grinder, um, you know, in terms of, like, shaping a knob. Um, I've, you know, so it, it just makes sense to do what's quicker. Um, hello, uh, Jim. How are things with you as well? And you saying sticks look great? Yep. Irish sticks made in Ireland as well. And uh, every time I see you, Jim, I, I think top of the morning to you. I think you're, you know the reference to that joke. Uh, ebony is used for violing uh, fingerboards as well. Yeah, it's a very, very strong type of wood and uh, highly sought after as well. There's my dad saying hello, Tim. Let's see. I um I carved a mushroom um from the ebony with just my barrel of pocket knife. I concur, it's too hard. African people have a similar yeah, it's called a knob knob neri or knob carry or something like that. Um yeah, I've been to Africa. I've been to Kenya and I've been to South Africa. I enjoy my time in Kenya. Shout out to people in Kenya. It was uh it's pretty wild place, man. Like uh nearly got eaten and attacked there. I, I yeah I I should have a channel just like for my travel stories. They're just basically loads of stories of near me losing my life. You know, so I don't know if that's the right content for here. I have some heart on sticks. Uh, poor man's black thorn, maybe. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, the heart on is poor man's black thorn. It's just like it's a common. It's a really, really, really common hardwood, and it's so plentiful everywhere as well. And it grows. It's just like to me, you know, like black thorn's hard to get. It retains its value and stuff. It's got the cool story, the history, the faction fighting. The, the name recognition as well. Hawthorne is like, what? You know, it's, it's just, it's a bit oh, underwhelming as well. Not to say I won't ever use it, like, but, you know, I just, I just don't like it. <laughs> I just don't like that wood. I think it's a bit of a, as you said, a poor man's black torn. I, I, that's another one. I should do another t-shirt laugh, poor man's black torn t-shirts. Um, lots of aha uh, here, but not much black. Yeah, it's everywhere, man. Uh, what is the best tree to make a shillelagh? Black torn, Puna spinona spillover or whatever it, the black thorn is the best wood to make a shillelagh hands down okay this is not just my opinion this is the opinion of generations of stick makers generations of irish people as well remember only buy a shillelagh from ireland this is a symbol of ireland it is an irish heritage product okay it's a protected product it's it's one of these products that i feel very passionate about and um, do not if you see guys in different countries making shillelaghs, it's not a shillelagh, it's a copy. You know, it's not an Irish heritage product as well. So um, I'm very much for, for promoting that. And I, I say buy from all Irish stick makers, you know, not just from myself. So as I, I'm such a great guy. I even recommend people to, to buy from these competitors who are always passive aggressive to me. Uh, Zero, I made a few cudgels of Horton, known as May because of flowers, uh, they aren't all that straight. Hawthorne's pretty straight when you cut when it's is available. I, and that walking video I did, I passed a lot of Horton. It's all pretty straight. Uh, let's see. Uh, have you just polished them and oiled them? And um, the finish is good. I stick away from the oils. Like oils is endurable. Like um, you know, if you like, there's loads of videos on YouTube if you want to go down that 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 things as well. It's like oils are really good for bringing up like the wood grain. So like if you want to like really bring up the wood grain and stuff as well. Um, so oils, they, they're just not, they're just not strong enough. They're not durable enough. Like, you know, if you have the handle and your hand is think about the friction and the wear and tear on it as well. That's why like, you know, Danish oil of the oils would be better. That's because it's mixed with varnish. Like Danish oil is just basically oil with varnish mixed together. And, you know, the first coat of Danish oil, you mix it with white spirits just to make it even harder as well. Then you put the second coat on you know, sand it a bit and then you have your third coat and boom, there, there you have it. Uh, but, you know, then when you're using Danish oil, like um, it, it takes like what's eight hours to dry in theory, but it takes a good 12 to 16 hours. And like um, if you have a stick and, you know, a customer wants to buy it and you just knock it over and it hits the concrete or something like that and you dented the handle or something, you know, it, it, sometimes you need 
you need better finishes to uh to, to work with as well so like usually like um if if you're interested in in like finishes and stuff like there's literally hundreds of channels on youtube that will go into great detail about it as well they describe like you know of course like um varnishes are pretty hard and um, polyurethane is pretty hard as well but there's issues i have with but polyurethane as well and a few few things as well that that um so it really depends on it and like <clears throat> you know you, you never want to put it really really thick into it. like the good thing about oil is it does seep into the wood so it goes down into wood so it doesn't gather heavy on the top and like if you are like using like the only the only oil you would use really that i'd say is like a danish oil um, like you can use linseed oil, uh, you know, teak oil, tongue oil, like all of these different ones. But oil isn't durable. It's like not designed for hands to be rubbing on it all the time and different things. And like, you know, if if you just want to bring out a wood grain and make it look pretty, like if you remove the bar completely and, uh, you know, if, if the grain was visible, like, you know, on, on a ash or something like that, and you oiled it, it would look fantastic, look great and stuff. But then when a guy is using it for six months, you know, it's not durable and different things like, um, you know, the, the reason why people keep coming back to McCaffrey Crafts and that I'm still in business after all of this time is because like, you know, my sticks, they, they do last. Um, you know, people, you know, sometimes they'll say, oh, why haven't you finished them more shiny, more this, more that or polished them? But like they're not they're designed to work. They're walking aids like I make walking sticks. The first thing I make is I'm thinking about, right, this guy is going to using it and uh, how, how it should be finished as well. Uh, let's see. I have an extra African cudgel, which is called a rungu. It's made of ebony, but it's too heavy. Yeah, you can't strike with it. Like if the the problem, like with with all these like sticks that you want to fight with, you need a strong wood, maybe a little bit of flexibility in it as well. Because like if it's too rigid, when you hit something, you you get that that reverberation up here as well. So you need a little flexibility. So you need it hard, and you need it the right way that you can strike with it. And uh, you know the cudgels that I have, like if you get one. 180 grams to 200 220 grams that's going to be pretty good that you can get fast striking on it as well um and especially as black torn it's a dense uh dense wood so you get get some of that and uh, i'm finally moving soon to a new place had a bonus uh lots of woodland so i do recon and see what's growing for future shillelaghs and carving material uh yeah it's always good to uh to discover new areas and new trees there's new na there's new park that's opened in in Kalorgla, and i had a walk around it uh, there's some holly and stuff in it like you know there's a few there's not there's like maybe 15 walking sticks in there or something like that but you know it's you know it, it look if i start cutting in there it might be an issue uh fa still get job done even if it's too heavy as well and um, no it's like well, i think what his point was john is that sometimes it's too heavy like if you're striking like you're doing the the various moves like you know you'll feel it on your wrist if it's too heavy and you're doing repetitions the whole time like um, a lot of guys, they don't understand that you can get a lot of injuries through repetition. So like, you know, some guys, they, they like, you know, I make walking sticks. OK, if you want to use a walking stick for 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 your stick fighting, like any stick fighter can use any stick. They can use a walking stick. They can use a staff. They can use, you know, they're, they're trained to use use weaponry, you know, as well. But um, if it's too heavy and you're doing repetitions on a bag or something, you're going to hurt your wrists. Uh, <coughs> the Torns ate nasty, too. Uh, I make a. Uh, some uh, sewing uh, seed needles from them as well. Okay, as well. Uh, Wednesday, Francis, I concur. No Frankenstein sticks as well. Yeah, like, you know, it's, it's like, I don't mind like Frankenstein sticks if you tell people they're Frankenstein sticks. But like, you know, when, when people from different countries are like making an Irish heritage product, I feel passionate that that, that belongs to Irish heritage, you know, and you're not doing it for, for noble reasons. You're just like, you know, wanting to make a bit of money and different things as well. Like, again, this is not a hobby to me. This is my full-time job. This is something that, that I'm quite passionate about. I think there's someone knocking again and uh, they're gone. <coughs> uh okay thanks john in fact it was too heavy to swing many times yes that's what i was saying exactly the repetitions if you keep if it's too heavy and you keep doing that like your, your wrist will go and you'll get that rotary cough injury which which i i have as well from time to time so like if you're doing it over and over and over and over and over again and you're doing different things you're going to you know when you get in your 40s and 50s man repetition you know it has some wear and tear uh buy from all 32 counties in ireland and get a real <laughs> irish craft uh shillelagh as well yes my dad for irish unity and in, in ireland uh the 32 counties referring to um northern ireland and southern ireland are one you know like uh guys like my dad and, and myself of course 
Um, you know, we're we're very keen on on Irish history as well. And uh, you know, of course, look, everyone can 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 have their own kind of things as well. But uh, my dad, of course, he he wants uh, you know, of course, a United Ireland as well, because uh, you know he is from Fermanagh, and uh, from you know, of course, uh, strong history like the McCaffrey surname was uh, was quite well known in Fermanagh and for, for 800 years even in the annals and the various records McCaffrey's are out fighting the English and fighting for freedom and fighting against the landowners as well like uh, McCaffrey was associated as well closely with the Maguires in the north and for for different things as well and uh, yeah it's like so you know there's a chance man there's there's a chance sure there's more like the demographics have changed in the north of Ireland now, and there is are probably more people that would want United Ireland as well. But uh, I think it's just more of an economic thing at the moment that's really kind of stopping the agenda from being pushed. And uh, people are always worried that the things will go back to the way they were with the bombs and the, the killings and the murders and, and different things like that, the criminality as well. Uh, let's see. Um, F A M P. I see. Uh, one type. Uh, one type oil spontaneously be put on cotton. Right. Yes, that's another good point, John. Yes, yes. Um, it does. <laughs> you got to be careful with that. Well, the warnings on the back. Um, when you use when you use oil and you have to use your your like um you know lint type of cloth, you know to put the oil on, and um, and if you leave the oil on the rag and you just kind of like if you roll it into a ball and put it down, it's going to start a fire. Um, so then that's that's another good thing to uh, to say to John Elliot um, there from John um, about as well and um, that oil spontaneous combust on cotton rags it does on many rags it's happened I've seen it loads of times man uh, that's another thing like uh, you don't want to come back to your workshop and it's just completely burnt down as well uh, I like my nunchucks uh, I train with them as well man you do a lot of everything you got nunchucks you're moving around you're walking on a hawthorn you made several cudgels as well. Uh, the nunchucks are cool. Uh, I always remember watching the Bruce Lee movies when I was younger and uh, seeing Bruce Lee with the nunchucks. I kind of wanted them as well. I can never, like, I, I have played around with, with nunchucks when I lived in Korea. This guy has some nunchucks. Uh, but again, I wasn't any good with these. I, I don't have coordinations. I know my skills. I'm pretty good at talking, pretty good at selling things, uh, pretty good at kind of like, you know, punishing myself with repetitive tax for hours. Uh, let's see. I train with uh, rat and cali sticks, uh, only training and not, not fighting as well. Well, that's good. You know, those sticks are kind of a bit lighter and you can kind of like you have the two of them, isn't it? And you, you go around as well. Um, I think that's 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 pretty good as well. It's not like a Filipino. Um, that's why I use a boot polish finish, no oil finish. Well, boot polish is from beeswax, you know, and then the wax finish that kind of goes in it as well. And you have to buff it up and make it a bit shiny. The only problem with that is like it'll come off a bit on your hand and, and different things. So is that an ambulance or a fire brigade? It's an ambulance. So usually you can tell it's like one ambulance per one person injured. So if there's a car crash and you see four ambulance goes, it usually means like there's there's four people injured as well. Um, so yeah, look at this time of year, there's with tourists and after traffic on the road, there's always a few traffic accidents, which is unfortunate. Especially when you had a few Guinness, you open up uh, as well as all do. Uh, yeah, Guinness. I, I've never, I never liked Guinness, man. I didn't really um didn't really like uh, Guinness too much. It was too filling, man, for me. I didn't like that. Uh, yes, from the the Philippines as well. I'd love to go to the Philippines and tour all the islands and stuff. You know, go into Manila, go down to like you know I can't remember Mid Mindanao and Cebu and uh, Cebu is a bit of a wild place. Uh, Boracay and I can't remember a few of the other places. Um, I'm serving in the Korean army and shillelagh would be good melee weapon when it comes from yeah like um everyone. In every man in Korea, I think between the ages of 19 to 27, they have to do military service. And correct me if I'm wrong, is it two years and, and two months? Something like that. And uh, so all Korean men, they have this uh, this military service as well. And, uh, you know, it's 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 quite different. Like I had some Korean friends and they were telling me about a military service. Like all, before, I don't know if it's the same now, but before all the Korean men would have to lie next to each other. Like they would just lie on the ground next to each other in the various barracks as well. And uh, everyone was quite close to on top of each other. And uh, it can be quite tough. Like, you know, you go in a boy, you come out a man <laughs> out of the Korean army as well. And, uh, you know, like for for me, I lived near uh, I, when I lived in Wanju. That's where the Air Force were. So I usually met with the American Air Force guys. And uh, then, of course, in Itaewon is the, the, the other kind of army 
kind of a, or the area where all the army guys go to as well? Was it the Young San Army Base or something like that? And uh, yeah, like um, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's a tough kind of situation there in in, in Korea. Um, I understand the the history very well in the country. Understands the history with Japan and the history that divided your country. So again, a lot of Korean people that I knew, they always wanted eventually to have a united. Like <clears throat> many people don't know, but there are some families that some of them live in the south, some of them live in the north, and they've never seen each other, and it's very very sad <coughs> as well. Uh, let's see now. Um, I had a rag catch fire in my shop. Yeah, so lie, man. I, I walked into a smoky room as well. That's one of the big, big things that, that people should be aware of. Like, there's a big warning on the back of those oils, you know, that they're very flammable. Um, you got to be careful with the finishes that are very flammable, very poisonous. Like, a lot of, like, so many guys are in s such a rush to do stick making. They think they can cut corners and do it all. They know everything about finishes. Like, you can, the finishes can end up messing up your health, messing up your lungs, burning the house down, burning everything down. Like, you know, working, <clears throat> Working with oils, like, is something that I don't do. Um, as I said, like, Danish oil is the only one that's hard enough maybe for a finish that is durable enough. Like, um, they look nice. They look different things as well. But they're, they're, not, they're not a finish that I would recommend. Look, at, some people like them. And they're good for really nice for bringing out wood grains. And they, they, they are a fantastic finish for aesthetic and appearance as well. I also enjoy Murphy's. But what's your favorite Irish whiskey as well? Uh, well... I don't know, I've ever just drink Paddy's or Powers, <laughs> you know, or something, something like that. Jameson's probably, yeah. Jameson's probably the nicest. It's a bit sweeter as well. I like the brandy more, Hennessy. Like if I had to, if I had to pick a spirit, an Irish spirit that I do enjoy um, the most, it would be Hennessy's. Um, I do like Hennessy's at Christmas time, which is more of a brandy than, a, than an Irish whiskey. And uh, I usually drink the Hennessy straight. And... Uh, I enjoy that as well. But like when I'm in Asia and stuff, which I go back to back and forth, um, you know, usually they're, they're always like ice and the, the whiskeys are very exp expensive as well. Um, but yeah, like um, I, I do, like if I do have to drink is something, something like a Hennessy's or something like that. Oh, yeah. So the military service is, uh, is two years now as well. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's a tough thing. Um, I remember like some guys used to get tattoos so they didn't have to do their military service. Um, you know, they pretend to be Korean gangsters, but they're not really. Um, and I know some guys would try to go to America to get away from it, but eventually they, they have to do it. Like I knew one guy, he tried to get away from it. He tried to do America, tried to this and that. And then when he was 27, he, he went into it and he did his two years till he was 29. And like at 27, he already had a wife and two kids. You know, he should have just done the military service when he was younger. Um, but like, uh, yeah, it's just, just, it's just something like different cultures. It has to be done. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys, like I, I spent like five years in, in Asia. So I would see Korean men or Korean boys go in and they would come out men. Like literally they were, they're very feminine, you know, very kind of maybe a mommy's boy too much. And then they, they join the Korean army and they come out, they are tough and they know how to fight. Um, they, they know how to like take orders and, you know, they, they come out. I think, look, in, in Korean culture, um, I think it's kind of um, a good thing to do the military service they it it has for of course look for the majority of guys it has a positive of course if you go in there with mental health issues there might be some some issue as well but uh yeah i think that um there's something to be said for for doing the military service in korea like uh, a lot of the guys that i seen it and that i knew it had a positive effect on them as well not the guy that was kind of had the wife and kids because she was pretty upset because you know she didn't see her husband she had to go to the base and the kids didn't see it but you know he should have just done it sooner <clears throat> my lids is in davo and um, for for a few years yeah that was down the south down down the bottom as well um yeah like there's loads of there's loads of interesting places like in the the philippines um philippines has a bit more edge to it from what i hear it's not like a thailand or something like that and um, you got to be a bit more careful you know you're more like you're more prone to get robbed or attacked or beat up in the philippines than you would say in in thailand from from guys that i know and have have done done both as well but it's like everything you kind of go for your you go and find out yourself um fa yep yeah, good for zombie apocalypse we had covid uh, next this is zombie apocalypse but we survived it, John. COVID is over. It's 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 gone. You know, it's if it comes back, we know now. Like, but it's 
it was never as bad as as they told um you know it's it's they all they, no one apologizes for closing businesses for years as well the commies on me as well yes yes the commies but uh yeah like it's korea's pretty close to uh to to, to russia but uh russia uh, korea would be like was it is pretty uh, Korea is good for business, but only Korean businesses. If you try a foreigner to have a business, you can't usually. Um, you always need like Korean names and stuff as well. Um, property prices were pretty insane when I was there before. Have they still continued to, to be insane? Like it's very hard. Like in Korea, it's such a small country. Like, you know, maybe is it the same size as Ireland or a little bit smaller? And like, you know, there's how many, like there's 20, 24 million people in Seoul in the city. <coughs> there's millions of people. I've actually traveled a lot around Korea. I've been to Chanju, I've been to Daegu, I've been to Samchek, the beach, I can't remember. I went to the swimming, is it Gangwon? Gangwon, I can't, sorry, the, the skiing, I mean, in the snow. You know, you, you go from Seoul and you go like um, west direction for two or three hours into the mountains. I, I've gone skiing there. Um, then I went to the beach, is it Samsak? I can't remember the name of the beach, a very famous beach. <laughs> and like in Korea on the beach, what was very interesting is like everyone wore clothes. Like it was really hot. I remember like the, the weather, like guys, if you want to talk about extreme weather, like Korean winter is one of the toughest winters you'd experience. Like it's it's really nice weather in Korea right up until November, maybe the first week of December. <laughs> and then in one day, it'll go from maybe 15, 20 degrees to boom, minus five minus 10, minus 15, boom, minus 20. And it stays like that for about two months. And man, is it cold. It's very, very cold. And uh, the Siberian winds come down and it's very, very tough. Um, but I do I do miss the, uh, the the soju drinking, the cold weather. Um, I did drink soju. Um, I had kimchi today. I liked uh, samgyeopsal, dak, dak galbi, the chicken galbi. Duck galbi was uh, was probably my favorite. It came with cabbage, with um, uh, sweet uh, potato, uh, with chicken and lettuce in this sauce as well. Um, so I, I do enjoy the, uh, the the Korean barbecues, like the real ones. I get very actually, I, I got very angry in Korea when I uh, sorry not in Korea in Thailand. I went into a Korean restaurant, and I went in there, and the place had good reviews, and uh, it wasn't Korean. Like it, I mean, like the. They brought out the wrong dishes. The the they didn't have the um you know the green sauce and the red sauce like you know you, you it just it did it wasn't authentic at all and uh, I actually was very disappointed. I gave out. I said this isn't Korean and they're like yes it is. This is the same as Korea and I was like no I I've been to Korea like this is this is not good and uh, a lot of the Korean people in there as well. I don't think they were too happy. But um, Korean food is uh, is pretty good. Um, you know when you go to the right places, very affordable too. So the thing is I miss about Korea is like uh, I, I do miss like hanging out with Korean guys. Um, I like hanging out with a bunch of Korean men, business guys. You go for a drink. You're just talking and they're very curious about life and your opinions and, and different things as well. Some wild nights out with Seoul, man. Like um, some of the, the guys, the business guys would bring me to, to the, the craziest nights out as well. The nights out that I couldn't even describe on YouTube where I'd be banned. Uh, let's see. A few people around have no brains and be classed as zombies as well. Yeah, look, they're uneducated. Look, some people are happy and ignorance can be bliss as well. And like you can spend all your time being angry with the world, being angry with the government, being angry. But like sometimes you just got to realize, you know, be a bit more selfish. Think of yourself, your family, look after your own, look after, you know, all the, the people that that you want as well. Like, you know, might that might be kind of like a, a better, better way to, to kind of like approach things. And uh, but yeah, look, you know, you're if you, if you start worrying about everything, sometimes, you know, governments are always going to be annoying. And that's why my rifle can rest every day as well. Uh, yeah. What rifle? What? What? Um, are you still like they still have the M16s there, man? That's not the best gun. Remember, the, the Koreans had a bunch of M16s given to the uh, by the Americans. Uh, let's see. Uh, it's non uh boiled linseed oil that I think catches fire. Yeah, that catching the fire thing is a big problem. It's something to be very aware of. Oils can vaporize. Yes, they can. You have your oil finished. You walk away from a few hours. You come back. It's gone as well. All of these things are spot on as well. You're saying can vaporize and spontaneous combust is um, it will spontaneous combust the more you use it. Um, 
I will have to remember about the rag and oil if I need some uh, some uh, some black for my insurance policy as well. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, you know you can you can do your insurance claim. There's always a few guys here like that. Always their businesses build down and they get some insurance from it as well. There's a few guys that make a living out of doing stuff like that. Liesl, um, been the causes, uh, Liesl, uh, been cases of people's spontaneous combustion too. Not sure if it was temperature, but it was 100,000 uh, Fahrenheit as well. <laughs> I don't know what caused cause, uh, someone to do that. Uh, you're right, John. I, I can't touch boiled in seed oil. I'm seriously allergic to it. Yeah. You know, people are allergic to different things. Like you have to be so, so, so careful with like um, with the different finishes you're using as well. Like, if you use the wrong finish and, you know, someone has some issues with it, you're in trouble as well, Jer. Uh, you're making me hungry as well. Oh, Korean food is the best, John. Like, it's just really hard because um, the, the problem with Korean food in the West is that it's very expensive to get all the side dishes. Like, when you go into a real Korean restaurant, you know, <clears throat> they're bringing you out 50 side dishes. Like, you sit at the table and they have so many side dishes as well. And um, they have the best meat sauce ever. It's called number three sauce, Sam sam sauce or some sam dan sauce or something like that it's like the best the best sauce and uh it's like a kind of garlic with with herb thing as well it's like a, it's really really good and uh it's something there that uh, you should definitely uh, uh definitely try as well uh let's see soju uh, irish whiskey is the best booze in the world i can guarantee it in ireland irish uh, sorry in korea irish whiskey is very expensive it's like um about I think, like, I remember, like, we would go in even to nightclubs and places, and the Irish whiskey was, like, $300, $400 a bottle and things like that as well. And uh, a friend a friend actually gifted me um, this guy from Apu he was uh, He was a rich, rich guy. His family were super rich. Two dads were, his dad and his mom were plastic surgeons and uh, very rich. And, uh, you know, he was a friend of mine, and uh, he would always want me to drink uh, Irish whiskey with him, and I didn't want to drink it, but... Because he had bought it for me, of course, I had to be polite and 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 drink that as well. Uh, why do you live in Korea and uh, and not uh, America? Um, I wanted to see the world, and Ireland were playing in World Cup in two thousand and two. So it's very rare that the Irish soccer team would qualify for World Cup. So Ireland qualified for the World Cup for Korea and uh, Japan in two thousand and two, and I went on to uh, the internet. Google was just about, and I said. How do I get to Korea? And teaching came up as teaching English, as as most you know most things came up. And uh, I saw that if you teach English in Korea, you get a free plane ticket and you get free accommodation. So my purpose was going to watch World Cup. And I said, this sounds good. I get to go a month beforehand. I get to learn the city. I get to watch the football. Uh, I get to see Ireland, and you know I got to see Ireland in the second round lose to Spain in a penalty shootout. I was right behind the goals when that happened. Um, I got and, and Korea actually made it to the semifinals, and the atmosphere in Korea was amazing. Like when Korea got to the semifinals of the World Cup in 2002, people were on the streets. There were street parties. It was it was to be honest, it was the best time ever. Um, there was like girls everywhere. There was guys everywhere. There was drinking. You know, um, everyone. The camaraderie was great. Um, Korean people, like you know, they just let loose and they were just partying as well. And uh, many wild nights were had in in Korea. So my reason for going Korea was mostly for the uh, for the World Cup as well. Um, I wanted to travel the world. Um, I was always interested in Asian culture. Like I grew up in the eighties, watching all ninja movies and different things as well. Um, liked a bit of anime and manga and things like that as well. And uh, I just wanted to kind of like there was always something interesting about like the the Far East and Korea and Japan and and something as well. And not many people went there. And I said, ah, sure, I'll go there. America, I can always go to as well <coughs> sometimes. But I do want to, I do want to, um, I do want to do a, a driving trip in America. Like if if I was to have my perfect holiday in America, what I would want to do is I, I want to get some some muscle car, get an American car, you know. And drive from coast to coast, and uh, I, I want to go down south. I want to stop in all the little towns and different things as well. I want to go all the way through the south of America and through all the different things as well. Work way down and, and across. And uh, you know, for me, that's like yeah, that, if we're going to America, that's that's kind of what I want to do. Just drive, you know, stop in little towns, meet people as well. And uh, you know, I'd love to. You know, maybe I'll do it sometime. Take three months off and just do an American trip. And uh, no, Tony Napoli today. Yeah, it's a good point. Tony, man, where are you? Tony Napoli is like, you know, he, he he's always here. 
Maybe last week, maybe he got offended when I said he hadn't bought one of my walking sticks after 10 years on the channel. But uh, I, I doubt it. I doubt it. I think he's probably busy. You know, he probably uh, he probably has uh, has something going on as well. Let's see. I use a K2 rifle. All right. OK. And, uh, you know, have you ever seen the, the movie uh, Full Metal Jackets? I think that's a pretty good army movie by Stanley Kubrick. Um, I'm trying to remember some good Korean movies. Um, I only remember the old ones like uh, um, JSA is a Korean movie, which is good. Chingu. Chingu is friend. Uh, what's this? I can say, Manas. I can say, what? my name is Francis. Manasembo Gapsum Lida. Um, Jonan Francis Im Lida. Um, Anyong Haseo and, and, you know, things like that. Yogyo. I can say bad. Well, I say I can say bad. I know all the bad words in Korean, like um, you know, from the gangster movies. You know, you know, shibalya kazuki. You know, which means there are the bad words in Korean language as well. Like I think everyone learns the bad words when they go to it as well. You always hear kazuki. I think it means translated into dog baby or something like that. And ah, shibalya. Ah, you know, and adashi and ajima and you know, it's uh. I know you you enjoy like someone you should go to Korea. It's Korea's a good holiday and stuff. Like uh <clears throat> sometimes it gets a bit tough. Like uh, some sometimes you meet like some uneducated Korean guys and they just want to start fights. And I didn't like that, but uh but you know, you it's 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 a great culture. <clears throat> America's a nice place to live. Um USA has every uh, every climate and, and art as well. Yeah, if I went to America, man, I'd be a billionaire by now. I probably would. Um, I had I, I nearly went to when I was a young man. I nearly went to Toronto as a recruiter. Um, I had there was this Canadian girl, and uh, she was very, very interested in me to go to uh, to Toronto. And I impressed her when we worked together in in Dublin. And uh, she was always wanting me to to go over to 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 stay in Toronto and stuff. And it just wasn't really for me. I just didn't really want just the idea. I just wanted to to like travel the world. And uh, I know I was always kind of drawn to to Asian culture. And uh, I just kind of like how I'm treated over there. It's like with respect when you're a bit older. Like age is very important in Asian culture. And they have like so much respect for family, so much respect for their elders. Um, I like the food. And I like that I can work really hard here and I can have a higher standard of living over there. And uh, I respect local customs and I respect local culture. I think that when you go into any country, you should always learn about the history and the culture. Like when I go into Korea, I know how to use my two hands. I know how to bow. I know how to be polite. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm not going to be you being loud in, in Thailand or getting angry. In Thailand, it's, you know, sweaty cap and you have to be smiling and you have to to do this correctly like there, there's various ways you can do it this way you can do it this way you know this way so you have to learn all the uh, the different aspects as well uh john's fired uh let's see a 7.62 and sa80 and a 762 slr i i don't know my my rifles or guns that well um let's see the SAU, so it's gun talk there. I, I really don't really f familiar with uh with those particular guns, but they're uh, pretty good. That's curious, John. Uh, blow my mind's away. If I cut fire, be my gas from lactose intolerance as well. But I hear it. Look, if you want to get rid of gas and farting and stuff like that, um, go on that that uh, kind of a uh, uh, bit of fasting and keto and stuff. Cut out bread. You know, like a uh, bread or sometimes like beef and stuff like that can do as well. But uh. If you cut out like breads and stuff, like you probably will, like you know as well. Let's see, lies. Google spontaneous human combustion YouTube videos as well, or lethal. Uh, yeah, it's like it's uh, spontaneous con combustion isn't really how I want to go. By having a Guinness fart and someone lighting a match. Yes, uh, the five fifty two. I prefer a seven uh, sixty two. Uh, I'm a grafter. I prefer a shillelagh carrying than football any day as well. Very good. Oh yes, the SA eighty, John. Uh, you served in the uh, the the British Army as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, in America, you could speak uh, you could speak English as well. Uh, yeah, it, it's uh, I should uh, I should definitely um, you know go to, uh, to to America and different things as well. But no, I just like kind of going and different. Sometimes I like challenge. Like when I went to Korea, um, I kind of hadn't got a clue. Like no one really spoke English there, and it was very difficult. And you just have to survive, pointing at things, learning the language, and uh, <laughs> and different things as well. But like I don't mind. Like um, I I love traveling. Uh, 
I love going to America. I love you know see Canada more. I like to go to South America. I love Africa. Anywhere that's different from Ireland, I just I just enjoy um, going to as well. And uh, I, I just I I really enjoy traveling. Okay, damn, it's lagging, is it? Okay, sorry about that. Could be just a connection or something like that. Uh, James, be American. Example: pavement, sidewalk, and deeper nappy as well. Uh, my ex was uh, American, was from Washington, Seattle. America is a good country to live in. It depends on what state. Um, I heard like California is quite a tough place to to live with a lot of the things, but places like Florida seem to be popular as well. And uh, you know, it just depends on 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 where it is as well. But uh, yeah, like uh, you know, you meet like. You meet so many nice Americans, sound, they're educated, you know, they know a, a good thing about the world as well. I think like sometimes like a lot of people like to do the old American bashing online and the stereotypes and different things as well. But like there's a lot of decent um, Americans that, that have I've met. I think within the walking stick community, you're meeting a lot of um, Americans who are educated, who are family men, who have jobs. And, you know, it's which which is the backbone of, of any society as well. <clears throat> say some uh, say say that in Thailand uh, is a greeting as well. Samotin. Ah, okay, and um, like you can you can say like um, tam tamalayu kap, and you know how are you and swadi kap, you know and different things like that. I don't know my Thai is terrible pronunciation. But I, I can kind of understand it. Um, let's see. If you own lo lots of land, then you are super good. Yeah, like in the States, of course, it's like that. Look, if you have land, if you have property. Um, in the States, like, you know, if you can get a loan to buy property, then you live in it. Then you buy a second property and you rent out your first property and you can grow a property portfolio. But, like, you really have to have a good credit score. And, like, you need, like, in America, it's so different. Like, you have to build up this, like, really good credit score i think what of over 800 or something and like sometimes it's good to get a credit card buy things on your credit card pay off the credit card every month to build up your credit score um you know there's there's loads of different things like that but it's kind of set up like to help people to do and like the thing is in america when you buy property you can write off a lot of things in the taxes so that's kind of what like Donald Trump does and a lot of other guys, the the rich guys in, in America, that when you buy property, you can it can help reduce your tax bill a lot. So, you know, there's a lot of advantages for for that's why I said I could be a billionaire. If I went to if I went to America as a young man, I would be a billionaire by now for sure. Without with my work ethic, with with my my skills, with how talkative I am as well. <laughs> and with the marketplace, like, you know, in America that the, the you know everything is is more expensive there for a reason as well like you know people have more money more more disposable income uh they are army rifles very good seattle's is 3k uh 3000 miles west of me on the other side of america yes apparently seattle has a similar climate to ireland uh we used to make sulfur tablets and make fart stink pad that doesn't sound too good i'm oh, sorry <coughs> never been to thailand or philippines you really uh enjoy this planet yeah i've been to loads of places been to cambodia been to japan been to malaysia been to laos um been through south africa been to kenya been to america been to norway france germany poland luxembourg belgium italy and go on and on i've been to a lot of places um i do like traveling very good she's laughing away uh, I'm not armed forces. We thought sniping from a sniper that got the opportunity to fire army rifles. Very good. I love uh, the mountain. Is there many mountains to climb in Ireland? Yes. Ireland has so many mountainous reasons. Eve, the thing about climbing a mountain in Korea is that usually there's a lot of people. So, like, there's a big queue to get to the top. Because, <clears throat> again, my experience is based on before. It could be different now. But... When I when I went climbing in Korea, like um, and every Korean person has the best equipment. Like they will buy the best quality hiking stick, the best quality rain gear, the best quality. You know, they're, they're, they do <coughs> Korean people. They do appreciate good quality and uh, they do research things as well. It's as uh, it's very interesting. So like, if you come to to Ireland, there's uh, many mountains to to go as well. Uh, a lot of Koreans are traveling now. Um, you know, before a lot of Koreans, they would go down to Jeju Island and Jeju-do and stuff like that. But now a lot of Koreans, you know, they're starting to, to travel as well. So hopefully that's good for the world. Bring some of that Korean won over to Ireland and spend some of that Korean won, which is the local currency. 
A hi to Aaron, of course. Seattle, Washington is uh, is, is is really. <laughs> I'll take your word. How do you know that, John? Are you are you going to those establishments? Let's see. Um, I can slice a paper with shooting a bullet trick shot. You're you're a man of amazing uh, talents, there, uh, John. So it's uh, you never never fail to uh, to to amaze me with 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 the amount of things that you're involved in. And I think we're at the end of the live stream now. I've been talking for a while. Um, as always, thank you for supporting Irish Crafts. I, I do enjoy these chats every Friday. Um, I have a lot of nice hazel um, that uh, that you can go to and uh, buy as well. And uh, you know, it's 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 quite uh, it's quite good. John is uh, is proud to be uh, a gay man, so that's that's fine. It's uh, you know, if you want to 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 do be gay, it's it's all good. And the gay area, oh my god, yes, in Korea they have too. Uh, they have they have as well. They have pretty much everywhere as well. But uh, but anyway, look, guys, thank you for watching. And uh, as always, I'm going to sign off now. Go back to my family. And uh, John is is being oversharing. You know, you don't need to come on to a Blackburn live stream and uh, to be telling your your preferences uh, in in uh, in what you like to do. So it's all good, John. So again, John, you know, before you overshare more things, I think I'm going to go now as well. Uh, let's just stick to the walk and stick talk. All right. Goodbye, John.